Hi, I'm Catherine Mortner. I'm a senior clinician here at the Anna Freud Centre and I work with children and families of all ages, um, particularly working with children where there have been lots of difficulties in the family and the, the children's emotional well-being and mental health is affected by those, those family issues. So the decision about ending therapy should be a joint process between you and your therapist. You might want to raise it or they might want to raise it, but that's always going to be a discussion about whether you feel ready for that to happen and the reasons that the therapist is suggesting that that might happen. Um, it might be that when you start therapy, there's a really clear structure and you know that you're only going to meet your therapist eight or 12 times. Um, but sometimes things are more open-ended and I, in either case really it should still be a conversation about let's just check in am I ready to end now and if not are there other options and how might we make that ending process as um, comfortable and, and to feel as, uh, as appropriate as possible. Yeah, there should never be an ending of therapy that's completely unexpected. Um, you'll either know from the beginning just how many sessions are available, um, and if you do, then there'll, there'll also be an opportunity to check in with you a few sessions before the end to make sure that that still feels appropriate and you've, you're going to feel ready to, to finish the work. Um, sometimes things are more open-ended, and at that point, the therapist should start a conversation, or you might be able to start the conversation if you're starting to feel ready to come to an end, about... Um, what the advantages and disadvantages of that will be, what it feels like to, to finish a process and to make sure that you're really prepared for that ending when it comes. So um, you and your therapist should work together when the ending's coming up to make sure that you've really thought about what that might be like for you and to help you manage your feelings in relation to ending that process. But there might also be space for a conversation about what happens next. Just because you're going to be saying goodbye to your therapist doesn't mean that you're not going to need support of other kinds in the future. So maybe thinking together about what else is out there. They might be able to signpost you to other local services. They might um, recommend websites like our youth wellbeing website or um, activities that you could do to kind of look after yourself. Um, and so there's also a kind of um, process of thinking with your therapist about what it's going to be like after therapy's finished and how you can continue to look after your mental health. So as your therapy's coming to an end, it might be that you discuss with your therapist what else might be helpful and it might be that they've helped you to find um, another service that could support you after, after therapy. Or it might be you found something for yourself. Um, and if that's the case, there might be an opportunity for you to do some preparation really for starting something new. Your therapist might be able to discuss that with you and help you think about what that might be like. And also potentially you could be in touch with the new service in advance to kind of see if there could be some kind of handover, whether your therapist could be in touch with the person you're going to be working with in the new service, so that it feels like there's a kind of really careful thought out um, handing over between those two services and that, they, that you can feel looked after really by both, by both organisations. Well, I think sometimes leaving therapy is a difficult process and that's going to be part of your experience of there's a kind of a beginning and a middle and an end and the ending can be difficult because it involves goodbyes and it involves stepping out and away from the support that you've had from the therapist that you've come to have a relationship with. Um, if you can, it's really important to think about that before the therapy ends and, and to talk to your therapist about it so they can help you with those feelings and, and to think through what it might be like when they're not available anymore and sometimes it would be really helpful for them to signpost you as well to other things that might be um, be able to meet some of those needs so it might be that there, there would be some kind of self-help activities or it might be that you might want to kind of find support through kind of peer forums or through other other therapeutic organizations um, if you needed to go and find something else for yourself but ideally you would be able to kind of be supported to make sure that you don't feel that, that once therapy's ended you're really on your own with things. So a lot of organisations that work with children and young people do end their service at the point of your 18th birthday and that can be a big worry for young people. Um, what I would suggest is that you're, you, you'll have time to think that through and to prepare for it and hopefully the therapist that you're working with will be able to give you some really good advice about what else is available. The reality is that sometimes going into adult mental health services is 
is complicated and you might not have access to the same kind of therapy that you've had as a young person or it might be that you there are different ways that you have to kind of different things that you have to do to be able to access those services um but that doesn't mean you're going to be on your own it doesn't mean there aren't alternatives so some alternatives might be about seeking out support from peers or from organizations that offer um kind of signposting services like the youth well-being directory that we have here or it might be that um, there are other organizations in your local area that you can find out about that might offer things that have a more flexible age range or, or, or kind of bridge that gap between um, being a child or young person and going into adulthood.